hands-on projects, and we do a lot of that at Wingrove. And we have a plan sheet that's pretty straightforward on what we're supposed to do each we week. We can decide what we want to do each week and when we want to do it. We don't use standardized tests. Our school isn't judged on those things. That's a key theme in progressive education that goes all the way back to John Dewey, who looked at the schools in the, at the beginning of the 20th century and asked, how can we prepare students to participate in a democracy? In our classrooms, you'll often see um, children working together on the group rug on the floor or around a table. We have lots of hands-on activities, lots of interactive activities, lots of circle time when the group comes together to solve a problem or read a book. Like we don't have like assigned homework or whatever. Well, we have assigned homework, it's just not due right away. Yeah. Well, we don't really have we homework, but if we don't finish something, then we have to take home. There's a degree of informality that really supports what we're trying to accomplish with the kids. And I think sometimes people, if they're not familiar with that, they can come to a school such as Wingra and be surprised that they don't call the teachers Mr. or Ms. You get to know not only the students, but the teachers really well, too. If you have 15 kids in a classroom and they're all going through a particular experience, we don't expect that they're all going to learn the same thing from that experience. If you have a portfolio, a collection of the work that that student has done that can illustrate what that student has been involved with, it's going to be different for each individual student and that's a good thing. The gifted areas are embraced and nourished and the areas where they struggle, they're met right there and encouraged to work on those areas. I spend a lot of time on the playground. <laughs> It's sort of the hidden curriculum. It's the place in school, I think, a lot of times that parents aren't aware of how much learning actually happens in those social situations. We have multi-age groups at Wingra because we feel that children learn best from each other. I mostly like working with partners, and I work with my with partners all the time. I love the multi-age classrooms where your children are able to be um, youngers one year and leaders the next. I really enjoy the interaction from the middle school kids with the younger children as well. Just um, they can act as great role models. My daughter, when we first just walked up this morning, all the older girls went running to her, and it's just a sense of extended family. We sent our kids to Wingra so that um, they would have a voice in their own education. Even the question of what is progressive education, we want to ask and re-ask that question. It helps us examine our practice, our philosophy as it's put into practice. I feel like Wingra is very responsive to what goes on in the world and changes in brain research and different theories and practices in education. Here are the distances in kilometers. After 30 We generate knowledge on our strategies for dealing with the world. So this math matches that. So we're looking at the base 10 system with really large numbers and really small numbers. And we use this viewer, which is 10 centimeters square, and it's 10 centimeters from the base. This was developed through the University of Wisconsin based on also math that was being done at the Freudenthal Institute in the Netherlands. So we think it's still the best math for kids this age. The students sometimes analyze the questions themselves and think about why the people that made this curriculum made it the way they did. And so that's kind of cool too. If there's something that we're interested in, if there's something the kids are interested in, we can go with it. I love the art class here. And I love art anyways. It doesn't have to be a specific length of time. It doesn't have to come at a certain time of the year. This is um, a painting by George O'Keefe, and she's from Wisconsin. This is, you know, remember I said there were so many really great books about George O'Keefe? This is another really great one. And I love just even the title page. I'm going to get a nice bright color. If I'm trying to get that color, but I can't seem to get it. It involves a kind of creativity that's really exciting. And I think that the reason that teachers love being a part of this community is because it allows them to be the best teacher that they can be. It's very fun to work with them because they are accustomed to finding out solutions for the problems and creative ways of doing things. And what we do here is we study plasma, and plasma is the fourth state of matter. And so what we're doing here is we're studying those kinds of magnetic fields and things to try to develop technologies that are going to make an actual fusion reactor work someday. Do you think we'll ever be able to harness the uh, amount of power it gives off? Yes, there's actually an experiment called ITER. What we're helping them learn is how to produce knowledge. But they're not left high and dry. I think that's really important. Students aren't on their own 
trying to decide, determine what they don't know, because how do you know what you don't know? So there is a structure to our curriculum that gives them a springboard to then head forward. It's not anything goes. There are expectations and there's hard work. And hard work is in and of itself rewarding. Wingra graduates go out into the world with just this amazing abundance of self-worth, I would say. They know how to ask questions. I hear all the time that high school teachers know who the Wingra kids are. You just really feel sure of yourself and that you can reach out to other people, that you can solve problems. At every level, in every classroom, students have opportunities to be leaders, to organize discussions, to present information. Okay, very good. So then the Sky Follies, I think the Safe Zone idea is a good one, but maybe not the whole thing. And uh, in the senior that. level, especially, when there's a decision to be made, they almost always need to come to consensus which can be a very messy process. It can be very time consuming, but they become really good at that. I think that's why we have so many kids who go on to become student body presidents in their high schools, that go on to become leaders because they know how to work with people. They know how to work towards solutions. We hear a lot from alum. Uh, they're tra they transition well to high school. Um, I'm a straight A student, I have a 4.0. I knew where to find facts and I knew how to learn. Life is complex and we don't shy away from that. The kids learn to be pretty self-sufficient but also very good contributors to the community that's here. And because of the complexity they move into a more traditional setting that's more structured and they can figure out that system very well. Student teachers who are at Wingra move into public schools, move into a range of schools and take what they've learned here. I went to the UW-Madison and I found in my teacher training the way that they described best practices is very similar to what's happening at Wingra. All of the teaching is collaborative. We plan together every day. I learned about the importance of dialogic curriculum, curriculum where people are talking. I go up to Ms. Narwin and just say, I'm having difficulties in this class, can I please move to another one? All right, so he was naive in thinking that by being disruptive he was going to get into another classroom, get the good grades, and get on the track team. Mm -hmm. So naive, what's another example of being naive? Who else was naive in oh. the book? We're digging deeper, um, we're learning from each other. The students learn because they want to learn, not because they want to perform a certain grade. And they don't think, oh, I got an A or oh, I got a B. I hope he's good enough. They think I want to get the assignment done to the point where I understand it and to where everything makes sense. We put a rubber glove on one hand and we put nothing on the other hand and we dumped it into cold water and we saw which hand would stay in longer. It helped us learn about how animals with the blubber, how they stay warmer. We have families enrolled that are involved at the university. We have families enrolled that are involved in the arts in the Madison community. It's really a, a, a huge range. We're not just appealing to a particular sub-segment of the Madison community, and that's a real validation for what we do. The tuition that we charge does not cover the full cost to run the school, so we do depend on the annual gifts. But we've also had many generous gifts to our scholarship fund, which has allowed us to offer the program to families who wouldn't be able to afford it for their children otherwise. I feel like Wingro really didn't didn't burn me out. It was it was like it was like just getting me started. So now I feel like I I'm I'm ready to go on to college. I'm ready to do like new things. When we have days off right now, I kind of miss school. Yeah. yeah. It really makes you want to learn, it makes you want to come to school. There's a texture and a quality about um, being here in the building that I, you know, you can't really describe. But it's certainly great to be here. And the seasons, they go round and round And the painted ponies go up and down We're captive on the